All right, so the 65 inch AE light gun test is about to underway. Uh, you guys owe my nephew Shiver Dyke in the pizza because he came over here to help me. I could have moved this by myself, but we didn't want to take any chances. And so from here to about back there uh, near my staircase where it starts is about 24 feet. So we are going to experiment from here, uh, from the point of this table. Uh, we have a tape measure. I have it right over there to that point. Uh, we're also going to use the uh, plug and play Batisera image on a 65 inch TV and give you guys our results. So we'll catch you soon. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't ever play with a gun. All right, so you guys made me do it. And some of you guys owe Shiver Dyken a pizza. It's his birthday. He came over, helped me move the 65 inch TV so we can do the AE light gun test. We're gonna test and see how far it goes back. Um, back behind me is the staircase. It does, a, it's, what is that, about 24 feet. And so I don't believe this test has been done. We'll make sure we'll do it accurately, but we have the sensor bar on the top. We just have a basic sensor bar it will read. And so um, I've tested it on the 55 inch, which is right next to it. And so I wanna give you guys the idea, like, hey, will the AE light gun really work of how far back you have to be, how close do you have to be in order for it to accurately work on a uh, 65 inch TV, because there's hardly any videos on it. And so um, we're gonna test it thoroughly. I'm gonna give you guys some other comprehensive things to take a look at in regards to uh, IR sensors and IR placements, because I haven't seen a video on that in terms of where you should put your IR sensors on the TV. And keep in mind, the place where, depending upon where you put your IR sensors on your TV, will determine its accuracy. People tend to forget that. You could put them too close or too far apart. Usually you want them uh, within a foot of the TV, maybe within, uh a half a foot or so between each side but keep in mind each position will determine the true accuracy and the experience that you do get it happens because we are getting ready to rock and roll and shiver over here is tired and knocked out so All right, so I'm looking directly right down the light of sight. Um, we are about, I think nine feet back. We're as far as the cable can go for the light gun. And we are dead center accurate. Um, there's no issues on the side of the screen. We are using, haven't used the extension cable yet. And so, um, yeah, this is working pretty good. No issues so far. All right, so before I get any further in this video, I wanna let you guys know that I did have a few complications uh, while recording this. I was fully calibrated and then all of a sudden um, after I let the gun uh, stay plugged in and had it angled off away from the TV for a little bit, uh, it kind of lost calibration. It took me a while to get it back. Um, I do know that Andy is working on a safe calibration for this gun, which uh, will help in the future, but that was an issue for me, but primarily, uh, for whatever reason, uh, this was my first time really getting a sense of how to properly angle my IR right, so sensor bar uh, for this setup uh, because I have this obviously on top of the 65 inch TV, which is almost about chin level for me. So it's quite, a, uh, quite high. And I know a lot of you are also experiencing things like this when trying to set up your sensor bar, but I did have some difficulties. Now, uh, these difficulties have nothing to do primarily with the gun, 
But remember, uh, this is my first time playing around with this type of setup. And so we're trying to create a safe space or a, a play area uh, with this light gun. And so primarily while I'm using this gun, I'm also trying to get a better idea of where I need to position my IR sensor bar. As you can see right now from the screen, I moved it from the top of the TV and it's actually right on top of the computer. Now, another thing that I did happen to forget, and I, I just happened to remember uh, uh, two years ago when I did my uh, first light gun review, uh, one of the things that you have to be mindful of too is your IR sensor bars are extremely, extremely affected by computer casings and other technology right, so that are around you. And so leaving the IR sensor bar on top of the computer actually causes interference. So that's something you guys may want to keep in mind. So I am going to move it, but I wanted to show you guys all these clips and all the things that I've experienced trying to set this up uh, because these are uh, problematic situations that you guys will run into. Now I did obviously get this running uh, perfectly fine on the 65 inch TV, but I want you guys to also see the process that I go through uh, trying to correct all the issues and all the things that I am problem solving as I go along. But with this particular setup, you guys will see this in the video. I do have a standard IR sensor bar uh, mounted beneath the TV and it's angled up in my direction, creating a better play area. I'll cover that a little bit more in the video, but I just wanted to definitely express to you guys what's going on right now. It is on top of the computer. I am having a little bit of interference is why it's losing uh, tracking and calibration there. But once I moved it away from there, moved the computer away, set the IR sensor bar directly on top of my uh, TV mount stand at the very bottom, uh, it created a better line of sight for the overall play capability. Shoot. All right, let's go ahead and try a different game. So um, again, I'm in a seated position right now. I've noticed that what happens to work best for me, but. Oh, cause you shouldn't have been in the way. So uh, right now my gun is a little well, here, let me go ahead and pause it. So as you can see right now, my gun is a little bit above the bar. I've noticed, uh, obviously you'll get different responses if it's above it or beneath it. Just depends on your own personal angle and how you want to have it fit. Uh, but uh, right now, I'll just go ahead and try a different game, but so far it's so good. Now I did have to calibrate this uh, gun a couple of times. Um, I noticed that once, wait, let me go ahead and do this. Once I took the gun off the TV or uh, had it sitting away from the IR sensor bar, it did throw off the calibration. So that is something to keep in mind. You may just want to keep it angled at the TV if you do set it down for any length of time. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the extension cable. We're gonna unplug the AE light gun. We're gonna plug it into the computer. All right, so that gave us an extra three, maybe four feet. 
So let's see how far we can go back, calibrate it, and see what happens. So what I'm going to try to do first is calibrate it while I'm closering, and then kind of uh, adjust my settings as I go along. Oh, they really spend a You guys can see this is where I was standing. Uh, do me a favor, get the tape measure, and I want you to measure how far I am away from the computer. Yeah, you give me. Um, I'm gonna start from here and all the way up. You know what? Do this. Hold up. You you hold. Yeah, you give me the tape measure. Mm -hmm. I have to hold both of these. And you pull the tape measure. There we go. Uh, yeah, just hold it. Put it behind the computer. Hold it. No, not that computer. The black one right there. Oh. All right. How far are we right now? All right. We're about 10 feet back. So I think the defaulted cable is about 10 feet. So now let's go ahead and back up. Uh, we're going to take this back about... Oh, shoot. Did it come out? Yeah. Crap. I'm going to have to recalibrate again. All right. Let's try this mess again. Uh, hold on to just plug it in. I'm going to have to recalibrate that anyway. Right. Yeah, just hold it. You're off the way out of the TV. Alright, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Alright, this is as far as I can go back. I'm about 16 feet. All right, so I'm about 16 feet back, and uh, let's see what kind of user experience we get. Let's play, let's try maximum force. And we still have tracking. As you can see now, this is where I was sitting. So now I am 16 feet back and we do have calibration. But remember, like I said, you know, as far, you know, the further back I get, the point, you know, gets smaller. So, you see the little mouse on the screen still moving. That's the cool part, because a lot of people say it wouldn't work on a big size TV. Is this a shoot off the screen reload game? I may have to adjust some things here. I have to get closer. So I'm wondering if I have to uh, put the sensor on top of the TV the further back I get. Let me move up closer and then I'll take a step back each time. Oh wow, that's cool.
All right, so let me put the sensor bar back where it was originally, because I know it was moved a little bit. Here. And after that, I'll try it on top of the TV and see what happens. Um, another thing I definitely want to mention to you guys is what, let me go ahead and turn this down before I continue. When I first started playing around with IR sensors, um, if you guys go back and watch, where the heck is my freaking phone? If you guys go back and watch my original um, Wii Remote review for RetroPie, other electronics has an effect on the accuracy of this. So. I have my computer over here, my laptop, because I'm recording the additional footage. And then of course I have the sensor sitting on top of a laptop, I'm sorry, on top of a computer. And so that could be causing additional interference with this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the computer over here to the right, leave the sensor here, because that could cause uh, some inaccuracies. And again, when I did that Wii Remote review uh, back in, what was that, like June? 2019 um, I had my laptop like pretty much here on the table and then I had the TV over here and it did have interference so let's go ahead and try that right now and so uh, some of you could possibly get interference having these IR sensors in in your in your um, your gamepad uh, inside your arcade cabinet so that could affect calibration as well. So I'm pretty much dead center now. Let's go ahead and put it right here in front of the TV. All right, let's see what happens now. Much better, because it was sitting on top of metal. So that metal could affect the accuracy of the sensor bar. And then of course it being on top of the TV too uh, could uh, affect it. You know, I really don't like this game because I don't think it really gives me a good detailed look in terms of some of the accuracy. So let's go back to Virtual Cop for a few minutes. I think this gives me a better look at what the game can do. Because right. Virtual Cop, you know, when you shoot somebody, it actually, you know, yeah hits either a limb or a head or they kind of react to how you shot them a little bit whereas if you're just playing maximum force they just kind of explode just like area 51 so much better much better accuracy since i moved that metal all right you're gonna get busy now baby it's time to get busy yeah Yeah, I love you too, boy. Let's go. Much better accuracy. Oh my God, so much better. So much better. So again, make sure you don't have metals around or other electronics uh, when you're using a light gun or if you have a sensor, because that can affect the overall performance. All right, let's take a step back. We are now 16 feet back. This is probably the furthest anybody has been. Let's see if it responds. Nope, 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 nope. All right, so, uh, hey, Shiver, do me a favor. I need the tape measure. You're gonna have to measure exactly how far back I'm standing. This, this happens to be the sweet spot. Here, just put it in my pocket. Here, do me a favor. Just put it on my finger, that end, and then you hold the other side. You said put this one on your finger? Uh, yeah, give me that end. All right. And which finger? It doesn't matter. Just give me this one right here. 
All right, how far away am I from the sensor? 12. 12 feet, all right. So the AE light gun, the furthest you can go with this gun is 12 feet before it just gives out uh, and there's no accuracy or any consistency. The only thing it does is just reload. Watch your step. Watch the light, light, light. All right, so 12 feet is the sweet spot. This is pretty much the furthest you can go back. See? You see how it gives out right there at that point? I can't go back any further um, unless maybe I put it on top of the TV. All right, you know what? Let's do that. Let's try that really quick. Top of the TV, let's see if we can go back a little bit further and get some accuracy. No, it's just gonna reload and reload with 16 feet back. No, that's as far as it's gonna go. And it doesn't like the top of the TV with the setting, as you guys can see, everything was working just fine, but it just depends on how close you are all right, so let's go ahead and move it back and uh, you guys will see the difference once again. All right, let's try it there. This time I have it angled up a little bit. Just trying to play around with this, see how everything responds. And again, I'm just trying to create different scenarios as to how you guys would install your IR sensor bar inside your arcade cabinet or if you have it around your TV. All right, we're about 10 feet back right now, so let's back it up. So right now the sensor bar is angled directly at me. Uh, it's not flush, just shooting straight, trying to see the camera. It's at an angle. So let's go ahead and move up so you guys can see it. So right now you can see it, it's angled up, creating a better spectrum. All right, so let's move close. Um, Shiver, do me a favor. Uh, measure how far I'm, I'm from the TV right now in the 65 inch. What's the tape measure? Finger. Yeah, give me the finger. Yeah. Is it from the sensor? Uh, from the sensor, yeah. How far away am I? You're... How far away am I? Uh, seven, seven. Is that upside down? What is that? How many feet? Uh, I think it is. Uh, it's this, um, I don't know. How many feet now? It's like eight feet. Eight feet. All right. So if you're going to use this on a 65 inch TV, you need to be anywhere between eight to, let me go ahead and start. Uh, anywhere between eight to 10 feet is your sweet spot for the AE light gun. You want to try? Yeah, because anything further past. Uh, yeah, anywhere between right. So right now you want to stay anywhere between eight to uh, eight to ten feet. Here, let me get the tape measure and I'll record. Let's go. Just move, just move forward until you're comfortable with it. Until it just stops responding. Oh wait, wait, stay right there. The start button here. Let me set the camera down for a second. 
Seven feet. All right, so you want to be between seven to ten feet. Sorry, buddy. Right here. There you go. Oh, that's right. This is your first time using a light gun, huh? Mm -hmm. So, how do you like it? It's pretty smooth. Back up a little bit? Yeah, because the further I back up, the more it's actually responds to me. So, I think now you're about maybe eight feet? Yeah, eight. eight yeah. And this is on a 65 inch TV. You can shoot those guys, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah put a cap in this behind. Starbucks on the front. Yeah, stay right there. Mm -hmm. You let him blast on you like that? I'm ashamed to call you my nephew. <laughs> so that's the same button. Start. Uh, do media. See if you like that a little better. is not Hagger. Just blast all of them. What difference does it make? You ain't gonna run out of quarters. Oh, wait a minute. You can't. It's only five credits. Screen shoot. So this is his first time playing a light gun game. Could you believe it? Well, here at the house anyway. So what do you think about the accuracy? That's pretty decent for now. Once you actually get the hang of it, it's like. Are, are you getting accuracy? Are you having to use the cursor on the screen or are you just aiming by yourself looking at it and it's giving you what you want? It's like I have to aim it a certain way. You can't just like, aim it like that. You just have to just keep a steady hand and just point it exactly where you want it to be. Yeah, but I mean, do you think it's accurate as it is just actually shooting or you have to use a cursor on the screen? Um, you have to use cursor on the screen. All right, but if you just remove, if I turned it off, do you think your, your aim will still be as accurate? Or would you have to back up another foot or two? Um, I would, I would have to see without cursor. Okay, well back up then. You want to stand in there. Well, just stay right there and back up any further. All right, so we're at about 10 feet right now. That's how I'm using my right hand, my left. Oh, God, here we go with the excuses. So what do you think now? Better, because I'm using my left hand a little further mm -hmm. back. Oh, so basically you're saying it was user error. See, this is why my KD ratio sucks when we play online, because I'm always having to carry them on my back. No, stop it. I'm going to use all of on top of the wheel. Let's well, see, there he goes. Hey, what was that game uh, uh, you guys had? Each you guys had like, like 70 kills on Gears of War, and you guys still lost the game? Oh my God. Oh my. You remember that game I'm talking about? You yeah. got, it was like four of them had like 70 kills each on Gears of War, uh, what was it, Gears of War 4, mm. and they still lost the game. <laughs> All right, let's try one more game. Let's try, uh, let's see, I'm Sega Saturn. Let's go ahead and try, let's try Virtual Cop. That was one of, this was one of my favorites in the arcade. Look at those lovely graphics on that one. There are some more games on this one, but I just want to keep it simple for right now, so. 
Not couch is way too much. Yeah, that, that, that's way too much. I barely sat down. I was already tired. Yeah. You just like hanging out over here. Yeah, I do. Alright, the start button is the same too. All right, so this is Virtual Cop on Sega Saturn. All right, no excuses, he's using his left hand. Just one bullet? You gotta put him down. So, are you having to use the cursor, or are you just free aiming by yourself and hitting? I'm them? using the cursor. All right. So the, I mean, so what do you think as far as the accuracy? So here, you want, let me turn that mess. You want me to turn it off? Yeah, turn it off. All right. So let me turn this off, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Pause it. So let's go ahead and start it over again. So we'll turn off the cursor this time. Let's see if it's off. It should be off. It better be off. It's not. No. Nope. We'll give it a second. The game hasn't started. Ah, oh, well, screw it. Oh, and he's doing gangster mode now. That's not how you do it. You got to throw it into him like this. I think the curse is the little yellow thing that circles around me. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so what do you think of the accuracy over uh, so far now with the gangster movie? I'm more accurate shooting like this, unfortunately. It's <laughs> One shot kill. Nice. And uh, Shiver, what are your thoughts about this that you like that? I actually, work, I like it I don't, because I'm holding it in gangster mode. And you're more accurate than just shooting it like that. Right. So if you, you know, decide to do it in gangster mode, you're literally hitting all your shots a lot. Nice. Line the Just like your uncle. Shoot him anyway. Nice. Good accuracy. 68%. That's not bad. No, that's not how you do it in this game. You got to put as many bullets in them as you can. Have you ever played this game before? Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. I failed. I failed. Oh, I failed as an uncle. I failed. I'm going to have to wear the hat of shame now. Come on, blast on him. Put I want my accuracy to be up there. Oh, my God. I have to swap hands on him, too. Uh-oh. Yeah, what happened? I swap hands. Curse is not reading until I saw his hands. 
Well, probably because the uh, camera's right there in the way over there, maybe. Possibly. Nope, because I'm left. See, it tells you to go back to left. Well, you are lined up centered with the, the IR sensor. Since, you know, when you're doing it that way. Ooh, there's an automatic. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's, there you go. Just blast on it. He said something about your mama. Put a few more in it. Hey, you still mad at me because I stole your Vex Methoclass? Oh my god, I'll never let that <laughs> So if you guys are familiar with uh, Destiny, like back in uh, 2014 yeah, or so. 2014. Yeah, that was back in 2014. We, we used to play hours and hours of Destiny. And, uh, you know, I wasn't making any YouTube videos or nothing at that time. And so I figured out how to get the Vex Methoclass. I knew, like, the first two people that would shoot the last guy on that, uh, what was it called? A, a survival mission or... Um, whatever it was called at that time. And so I accidentally oh, yeah. shot the guy and I got the Vex and he needed it. No, that was from the Raid. Yeah, the Raid, that's what it was called. Did you ever end up getting the Vex? No. <laughs> He's still mad about it. Hey, hey, remember, let me see, that was back in, no, that was back in 2014 too. Remember when yeah, I told you? November 18th. No, 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 no. Remember when I told you it was your birthday? Or no, you graduated from school. No, 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 no. We, 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 I took you to GameStop mm -hmm. and I told you you could pick out whatever you wanted. Oh, uh, and you walked in the store and I only grabbed a game. I was in summer school, I yeah. He was in summer games. school, yeah. I yeah and I told him he could go to GameStop and get whatever he wanted. He came out with some little cheap $30 controller. No, he said, <laughs> he, he came out the store with some little $30 controller. No. I still got the photo. No, exactly what happened. I asked if I can get an Xbox. He said, nah, 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 go pick I it. I didn't up. say that. I never said no. I never said no. So, no, I, you did say it. You I said, never, nah, 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 go get I a I never go said, get I word. never said no. And when we went to the store, I said, well, then why didn't you grab the console? Why is my face so disappointed then? <laughs> because I told you, you could pick out whatever you want. I never gave you a dollar amount. And then I, then I asked you, why did you pick out the controller? I would have got you the Xbox. Uh, at least I was still worried about your pockets then. I wasn't worried about my pocket. I was. Yeah. I was oh, like yeah, he was worried about my pocket. So the thing is, I took him to GameStop because he graduated and did good. I never gave him a dollar amount. He picked out a $30, $30 controller, and I would have bought him, what was it, like a $300 Xbox or $200 Xbox, whatever it was. That was so hilarious, so... Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this AE light gun uh, tutorial and review. We had some great fun. Uh, you guys owe Shiver over here a pizza. I know Keo Jr. over here, he's getting Send me hungry. $20. $20. Everybody on that live sends me $20. Everybody, send, everybody sends you 20 bucks. So the sweet spot is anywhere between 8 to 10 feet. Exactly, because we measured it with the tape measure. I have it angled up, and I'm using this sensor. And it works great, as you can see. Bottle. It works great. So the sweet spot is eight to 10 feet. So again, uh, it does depend on how far back you want to stand. Uh, we do have an extension plugged in, but uh, we could not go uh, back further than 16 feet. And that's probably because of that particular sensor. If we had other sensors, we could probably go back a little bit further, but I'm not going to test any of that. All right, move up a little closer. Tell me when it... How's it feel still? Not really shooting where I'm shooting at now. All right, back up. How's it now? Better.
how's the accuracy? Is it where you should it? Yeah. give Call of Duty a try like this. <laughs> oh God. All right, I want to show you guys something really quickly uh, to help give you a better idea about how IR sensors and how IR guns work. Uh, what you're seeing in front of me, the, this is my 65 inch TV. Uh, these are the original sensors for the PlayStation 3 Time Crisis 4 game. And um, I had these always hooked up since 2007 to a 50 inch TV, dead center, perfect calibration, never had any issues with it on the bottom, on the top, or the left, or the right. And I usually stayed within maybe six or seven feet within the TV, never really had to venture off so far back. And uh, what I have right here in my hand, you guys will have to excuse me because I'm doing this with one hand. Uh, these are the sensors, the other sensors that come included with your shipment with the AE light gun. I'm not actually sure what uh, Andy is sending out right now, uh, but this is what came with mine. And then of course he also sent this one as well. Now, I know that I will have to stand so far back in order for this IR sensor to perfectly read and perfectly calibrate uh, with the gun, but as I said earlier in this, in this video, it all depends on how you have these sensors set up. If you have these sensors set up on your ceiling or wherever they are or wherever you wanna have them, it will read because keep in mind, you're not shooting at the TV for accuracy, you're shooting at a point. And what happens is this, most people that set up their setting, they have an arcade cabinet or whatever, they put the sensor somewhere around their TV, which is absolutely fine. But keep in mind, uh, this isn't, this doesn't, this isn't uh, locked down. This isn't uh, mounted. You can move them however you want. And then of course you can mount them however, but I want to show you guys something. You can put these sensors anywhere along your TV. You can put them at any degree. You can have them in. Here, I want to show you guys this from an angle so you guys can see it. You can have them sit on your TV like this. You can have them angled this way, this way. So at any different angle or any different degree, each one of these uh, degrees, when you have it 30, 40, 60, 80, 90, or whatever, that determines your accuracy and your calibration. And so a lot of people will say, well, hey, this won't work on a 65 inch TV, won't work on 80, won't work on uh, uh, 25 inch TV. You're standing too close. That's not necessarily true because all of that determines or is all dependent upon how do you have your IR sensors angled? Now, I know even with the gun for IR light gun, uh, there's four sensors, something very similar to this. I think maybe they're a little bit more powerful, but in some cases that really doesn't even make the case. But keep in mind, even with the gun for IR, if I was to mount this on a 65 inch TV, it would probably be here facing like this and then of course, I know sometimes you have to install a fisheye lens instead of maybe turning it in inward just a little bit. And you're shooting at a point because remember, this is all triangulated. And so even if you have a sensor down here, it's facing this way instead of facing this way or maybe this way. So that way the camera can actually see the sensors a little bit better or instead of 
This way is facing inward in my direction. But this is what you'll see. You'll see IR sensors around a cabinet or a TV pointing this way, pointing this way, maybe pointing that way, maybe pointing downward, probably not pointing upward. If I was doing it, I would probably have it angled down this way a little bit, angled inward and down. So that way it could probably see me depending upon if I'm seated or standing, or if I have it on the bottom, I would probably uh, angle it up a little bit and then maybe inwards. But again, all of that affects your calibration. And so people say, hey, my light gun's better, my light gun's better than this. And in some cases that could be true, but if you're not properly placing your IR sensors where it needs to see the point, then what good or is it are you doing? If you have your camera sensor or your sensors pointing out into the middle of beyond and you're it's and it's fixated in a position, not fixated on you and where you typically stand, it's not going to give you a good accuracy. It's not going to give you good calibration or a good reading. So even with this sensor, because I have it up so high. Now, as you can see, this TV is a lot lower. This is typically a normal residential setup. Uh, the T, you know, you can see the tables right here. And then of course you have your TV there. Uh, this is typically what you would find in a living room. This TV right now is sitting on a six foot folding uh, table. You guys can go to Walmart, one of those places, get it. It's at that level. And then of course it's setting up a little bit higher. So this is not a normal level. So because of that, I'm now going to have to adjust my sensors based upon how I want to gameplay. You cannot just mount IR sensors where you think they ought to be uh, facing into the middle of oblivion, it, you know, and instead of having it uh, adjusted to your own personal play space. So if my perfect angle or my perfect viewpoint, it doesn't even have to be on the TV. Even if I put these IR sensors up there on the wall, up there on the ceiling, anywhere down there on the floor, you can get really good accuracy because it depends on where the vantage point is so the IR sensors can see the camera. You guys all understand this. If I had the IR sensor pointed here, well, actually, no, let's do this. So here's the TV in front of me, right? I wanna show you guys something. Here we go. Where's the TV? Where's the TV? Where's the TV? Now, this is what the IR sensor sees right now. Let's go ahead and adjust it for every different position. If I'm gonna move the camera down, I'm gonna have it angled up so it can constantly keep vision with the TV. If I raise it up, I'm gonna to have to angle it down. So you guys get the point, but I wanted to make that perfectly clear because this is 2022 and we have individuals that don't know how to properly place their IR sensors around their monitor and stuff for perfect uh, sensitivity. Because as you can see, I was standing 15 feet back or anywhere between 10 to 12 and this can see it, but it all depends on where the IR sensor is um, in relation to the TV and where I plan on perfectly playing. That is not something a manufacturer can tell you. No manufacturer can tell you or a light gun designer, uh, you need to place them here and there, but that's probably within 60. But you guys get the point.